There's another verse that I heard somebody preach on that you all know that I'm putting up here now, and it's two different places in the Bible, Mark 6, 11 and Luke 11, 3. We know it as part of the Lord's Prayer, and you all have heard it, I'm sure, many times. Give us this day, or give us today, our what? Our daily bread. And anybody here ever hear a sermon on this? I'm guessing most of us have. Some, somebody, what's the daily bread? You could compare it to manna right in the wilderness and when they got the man it was only good for that day so give us the bread that we need today because tomorrow I can't use today's bread right but what the Lord was messing me with this week was there's another explanation for that word and I found it really interesting and I like this step Bible if you if you like to go online to do some of your research this is a free one stepbible.org and it gives you the roots of where these words come from well, there's only two times, not just in the Bible, but this says in all of Greek literature, this is the only place this word is found. And wouldn't that be just like Jesus? To come up with a word to explain what he wants you to understand. Only place in all of Greek literature is right here in these two verses, same word. I don't want to, any, do I have any Greeks here that can tell us how to pronounce it? All right, so I'll do the epi usios. So they can laugh at me <laughs> when they watch this. All right. So however you say that word, it says, listen, there it is. This word occurs nowhere else in Greek literature except in the context of the Lord's Prayer. Guesses include necessary for today. How about necessary for tomorrow? All right. So where is he going? Like, what's he talking about? What if you could pray this way? Give us this day tomorrow's bread. What would that mean? It would mean I want to be a new wineskin tomorrow when you want to pour in my new wine. So help me know everything that you want me to know today so I don't get stuck in that toxic religious thing that causes me to lock down in my habits and lock down in my thought process. And, and help me remember that no matter how much I already know about you, I can never know everything there is to know about you. And I want to live with that childlike way of curiosity to want to know you more. And every day... I think you could speak to me and help me understand more of your character. We, we posted a video of Bill Johnson, and it says, read until he speaks. And it's already got, like, I don't know how many, 50,000 views in, like, two weeks. So something resonated with all the people out there on YouTube that said, yeah, you know, that really makes a lot of sense. I don't want to be religious in my devotions. When I sit down with my Bible in the morning, I could get through a half hour and not remember what I read. Or could get to the end of the page and realize that I've been distracted. Anybody suffer from that problem? We all should put our hands up here, right? And if you don't, you can lay hands on the rest of us. Because the world is a very distracting place today. There's so many tools available for the enemy to rob us of our attention span. So the, the discipline there that really resonated with all these people online was like, yeah, wait a minute, I'm going to do that too. Uh, when I sit down, I'm not going to let it be a dry, dead devotional time. I'm going to read until he speaks to me. And if that means I have to get up earlier, I'll get up earlier, but I'm not going to walk away unless I feel like I heard. That's the daily bread. But tomorrow's bread gets into this concept I want to try to explain. So here we are today, and here we are tomorrow. We know that that's not a given that we're going to be here tomorrow, right? We just thank God that we're alive today, that, that we woke up this morning and he gave us the breath and everything we have is a gift from him. So it's, it's a great promise that he gave us, but who knows? You don't know. So we're going to live as if we're fully engaged in the moment, right? So there's the present kingdom that we're in right now, and then there's the future kingdom when he comes back. He allowed us to get a taste of his kingdom today. All right? And that's why in John it says, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God or you can't see the kingdom of God. So before you were saved, the kingdom of God was in operation, but you just couldn't see it. And now that you're born again, you can see it and then you can enter it. But it's two steps because seeing it and entering it are two different things. You could see something but not choose to enter it. So how about if we made a decision every morning to say, I choose to enter the kingdom of God today, meaning I'm not going to live by the rules of our culture and our society. And if I had one way to summarize what our society is trying to do today, the non-Christian part, is they're trying to normalize sin. You know what I mean by that, right? Like all the things in the Bible, it has a phrase that says, 
The world is calling the things that are wrong right and the things that are right wrong. It's like the plane is flying upside down and the pilot doesn't know it. But we're not responsible for the world. We're responsible for ourselves first, and then we're responsible to bring the truth that we understand out to the unsafe people. But they are watching what you do a lot more than what you say. And, and it's what we say that can get some of that toxic religious stuff in there that we want to be delivered from. Well, OK, how does that apply to what I'm saying here? Two ways, really. When I wake up in the morning, and I'm going to be, always be an advocate to pray in the morning and to get up earlier than you normally get up so you can pray in the morning, read your word, have your devotional time, start on your knees, take communion before you do anything else is a great way to start the day because it sets the course for the decisions that you're going to make throughout the day. And a lot of us know what it's like to, to wake up late, oversleep your alarm clock. Anybody here ever oversleep your alarm clock? You know why the roads around here are so dangerous? Because there's a lot of people that oversleep their alarm clock. And it's your fault that they're late. So if the light changes and you don't go, it's not a little poop. It's not a little puppy thing. They're opening their window. They're sticking their finger out at you after they go by. I'm not late, bro. I got up on time. See, there's this crazy, like, Thing. Like, it's your fault that I'm late because you're in my way and you're not going fast. <laughs> no, no, not my fault. You overslept. Call your boss. <laughs> so let's just have scenario one is I pray, I get up and speak in tongues and I have time with the Lord and I say, Lord, I'm going to read until you speak to me. I welcome you in, Holy Spirit. And Lord, give me today tomorrow's bread. See the difference? I need daily bread today, but when I come up to tomorrow, I want to say, what did I do yesterday that either contributed to me being in a richer place, more like him, more transformed into his image, or because I overslept, I was really nasty, some, nasty to somebody on my job or whatever. Now, you know, I'm not saying be a control freak about this, because you have to live life in a, in a relaxed relationship with the Lord. He was never, the Lord was never uptight. No matter how he got confronted, he always maintained a peace about him. So there's a lesson in there for us, right? We keep an eternal perspective about things. Other people get really upset when they hear bad news. And we're like, you know, because we're Christians, we can keep it in perspective and say, you know, in the big picture, we still win in the end. That's what Paul said, right? I like being here, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So that's a pretty good deal, too. And that just causes us, hopefully, to have more of a peace about us. So Lord, give me today the ability to live my life in such a way that when I wake up tomorrow, I say, that contributed to me getting closer to you and me, and me more transformed. And I'm gonna look back and say, well, there were areas that I didn't get an A plus on that thing. That's okay. That's part of the transformation process, isn't it? That's part of the fruit of the spirit is just being able to be honest with yourself and, and ask for help. Like, Lisa said she got counseling, she went and talked to people. Once the thing gets identified and you just hate it so much, you're willing to do whatever it takes to kill that monkey. You don't feed the monkey on your back, you starve it, amen? 